High on Life is a wacky single-player FPS adventure from the creators of Rick and Morty that recently hit the Steam shelves. We were determined to try the game on our Macs, but the game currently lacks support for Apple computers, so we had to improvise. After hours of meticulous testing, we found several viable methods to run this game on a Mac, and now we wish to share our findings so you too can enjoy the title on your Mac. When it comes to playing unsupported games on a Mac, there are two main approaches you can take. The first one is to stream the game on your Mac using cloud gaming. The second one is to install Windows on your Mac and then download the game within a Windows environment. The advantage of the cloud gaming approach is that the hardware specs on your Mac don't matter. This allows you to play even the most demanding games on weaker and older Macs, because the game would really be running on a remote gaming rig that you connect your Mac to. Another plus is that you don't need to download the game, a big advantage considering that some games can take up to half your storage space. The only factor that determines your cloud gaming performance is the strength of your internet. This could be a potential downside because if your internet isn't good enough, you'll get very poor cloud gaming performance. The other downside is that most cloud gaming platforms require a monthly fee. There are hardly any free options, and the ones that are available are very limiting. On the other hand, if you want to play the game through the Windows method, we must remind you that your Mac specs will need to cover the system requirements of the game. High on Life isn't too demanding by PC standards, but it's also not a lightweight game, so be sure to check the minimum and recommended hardware requirements. Also, know that starting up either of the Windows methods that we're about to show you can take some time, while starting the game through a cloud service is much quicker. On the plus side here is that your internet strength will be irrelevant while playing because this is a single player game. Right off the bat, we must say that we recommend the cloud gaming method for the reasons mentioned above. However, your internet connection has to be up to the task. We'll now tell you about two cloud gaming services that you can use to play this game. The first one is called Xbox Cloud Gaming. To use it, you must be subscribed to the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate plan. This plan grants you access to both the Xbox Cloud Gaming service and a big library of games you'll now be able to play for free with over 100 games for free. You can play them either with Cloud Gaming or by downloading them locally in case your internet isn't fast enough to stream them, which is another huge deal. Note that to install any games locally, you'll first need to use either Parallels or Bootcamp to get Windows on your Mac. We'll tell you about those two later in the video. If you think this is for you, just follow the link in the description to sign up. The first month of your subscription will only cost $1. This is undeniably a great deal. A quick side note, the cloud gaming service included in the Xbox Game Pass isn't available in all countries. So here are all the supported regions. If your region isn't supported, but you have a good internet, you can use a VPN and reroute the connection through a supported region. We've tried this and it works pretty well, as long as the internet connection that's being used is fast enough. Now back to playing the game. Once you start your subscription, you must open the play page on the Xbox site, find the game and click play. The game will start loading within the browser, but you'll also see a message telling you that you need a controller to play the game. If you have a controller, connect it to your Mac and you can start playing. If you don't have a controller, you must install a browser extension called Keyboard and Mouse for xCloud. Currently, the extension is only available for Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge, which is why you'll need to use the xCloud service through either of those browsers. Once you install the extension, pin it to the browser's toolbar and enable it. Then start the game in xCloud and click in the center of the screen to start using the extension. If you're not used to playing with a controller, using the extension can be a bit awkward at first because it translates the keyboard and mouse inputs to control button presses and analog stick movements. Just be patient and we're sure you'll eventually get the hang of it. Okay, yeah, you, you figured it out. Other than the potentially unfamiliar controls, the gameplay experience with xCloud is great. The image quality is consistently kept at 1080p with 60 frames per second, and unless you have a really bad internet connection, there should be little to no stuttering. Additionally, if you're using the service through Microsoft Edge, which we recommend, you can click on the menu in the top left while in the game, then select the three dots and turn on the clarity boost option to get a notably better image quality at no performance cost. The next cloud gaming option we'll tell you about is Boosteroid. Using it is super easy. Just register on the site, go to the profile page, click the subscribe button and start your subscription. Once you're subscribed, type the game's name in the search bar on the top. Open the game's page, select play and click OK, let's go. When you see a Steam login screen, enter your username and password to log in. 
then search for the game, select it, and click play. With Boosteroid, the game's image quality is capped at 1080p and 60 frames per second, but whether you actually get that depends on your internet. The service will automatically lower the game's resolution and FPS to keep the performance smooth if you are experiencing connectivity disruptions. If you want to try Boosteroid, we recommend using through Chrome or Opera. As the service is optimized for these two, it can work with other browsers like Safari, but in our testing we found the experience to be significantly worse. As the performance is mostly influenced by the internet speed, we recommend testing your connection before committing to the service. To test it yourself, you can find a link below the video. Hey, if you think cloud gaming isn't for you, there's also the option to turn your Mac into a Windows PC. Uh, sort of. While there will be some drawbacks, it's possible to install Windows on a Mac and run compatible software, including games. The method we want to show you is through an app called Parallels that allows you to create an entire Windows virtual machine on your Mac. This one is also paid, but it also features a two-week trial, so we recommend making use of it. Start by downloading Parallels from the link below the video and install it on your Mac. It's a very straightforward process. Just provide the required permissions and the program will soon be installed. Next, Parallels will automatically ask you if you want to install Windows. So click the install button, lean back, and maybe check some other videos because this will take some time. After the Windows Virtual Machine is ready, you will be asked to log in. You probably don't have a Parallels account. You can use one of the sign-in options. Once you're in the VM, you can use it as a regular Windows PC. So go ahead, download Steam for Windows, install the game, and launch it through the Steam client. It's important to note that the Parallels VM can only use half your Mac's hardware resources, which means that your computer must have at least 16 gigabytes of virtual memory and an octa-core CPU to be able to run high on life through a virtual machine. In other words, this method is only recommended if you have a powerful high-end M1 or M2 Mac. To get Windows on your Mac with the Bootcamp Assistant, first go to the Microsoft site and download a 64-bit Windows ISO file. Then navigate to the Utilities folder on your Mac, launch the Bootcamp Assistant, and click Continue. Load the ISO file, then allocate at least 120 gigabytes to the Windows partition and start the installation. Next, simply follow the prompts to install Windows and personalize its settings, and you should be ready to go. The only thing that's left is to install any necessary drivers so that your Mac can run Windows without any issues. We have a detailed guide on the whole process linked in the description. With Windows on your Mac, all that's left to do is download the game as you would on a Windows PC. The performance you'll get here entirely depends on your Mac's hardware. Generally, any Mac release in the past 3-4 to four years should be able to run it without any issues, but you'll need a powerful machine if you want to play the game on higher settings. What's the guy in the mansion like? Oh, his name is Ranchi Delarma. He warped in not too long ago. Seems to be old acquaintances with Krubus. We haven't dealt with him much, but he seems to have a penchant for Fergals. Oh god, he's a drug addict. Here are the conclusions we've made after testing each method. Cloud gaming is the best option if you have a decent internet connection and works on both Intel and M1 Macs. Sorry. Bootcamp is good for Macs that have a high performing Intel processor and lots of storage. Parallels works well with high-end M silicon chips, but isn't recommended for weaker Macs that lack the hardware power to run the game in a virtual machine. And so this concludes our overview. Hopefully, one of our suggested methods would allow you to have fun with the game. If you liked this video and found it in any way helpful, we'd appreciate it if you left us a like or a comment below. Also, if you want to see more interesting Apple-related gaming content, be sure to subscribe. It motivates us to keep on making more great videos.